Inspectors Samuel Garca and Castro are the focus of the Patsy Amezcua directed Netflix Spanish movie Infiesto, which looks at Sayoa Blanco's recent reappearance after being abducted months earlier. The young girl managed to escape from Samuel and Castro's grasp as they set out to find her captors. Infiesto, a mining town, has abandoned industries and mines, and the two investigators' investigations bring them there. The gripping thriller movie concludes with a number of stunning and perplexing revelations. You're in the proper place if you're curious about the subtleties of the movie's conclusion. Spoilers follow. Sayo Blanco first appears in Infiesto three months after being abducted. She is located and taken to the hospital by two neighborhood police officers. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, Inspector Samuel Garca is grappling with the absence of his mother and family. Carlos, Inspector Castro's partner, is confined in a locked room at their home, and she must deal with their separation. They are tasked with looking into Sayoa's abduction and reappearance. Samuel searches through the records of criminals who frequent the area where Sayoa was initially spotted, and this information directs the police team to Manuel Gomez's stable. Meanwhile, Samuel learns from Sayoa's forensics reports that the little girl's body contained wine-related substances. Samuel joins Castro in trying to capture Manuel after recalling that there were wine barrels in the man's stable. Manuel commits suicide before the cops are able to apprehend him. Castro and Samuel had suspicions that Manuel's cousin was involved in the abduction of Sayoa, but the cousin leads them to Santiago Marquina, also known as the Demon the real companion of the deceased. When the detective team gets to the demon's house and tries to unlock his trailer, it blows apart. Castro finds pictures of many kids while exploring the burned-out trailer. Samuel and Castro succeed in capturing the demon with the help of one of the criminal's closest acquaintances. While interrogating him, the demon talks about a higher power named the Prophet, who is more powerful than him. His words make it clear that he is just an accomplice of the prophet like Manuel. The detectives also learns that the children in the photographs were kidnapped every three months from distinct parts of the country. To confirm the existence of the prophet, Samuel meets Sayoa, who makes sure that three people kidnapped her. While the two detectives set out to find the prophet, a young woman gets kidnapped, alarming the authorities concerning her potential murder. Why did he kidnap and kill his victims? The local police officer, Agent Ramos, is the prophet who locates Sayoa and brings her to the hospital with his partner, Agent Altuna. Ramos was a well-known cult leader who hid out in the abandoned mines of Infiesto before becoming a police officer. He also worked as a teacher at a nearby school, where he met Manuel and the demon, who later joined him as followers. The prophet liked a hedonistic life and urged others to do the same. At the time, he was loved by the children and the townspeople. However, as he became more familiar with Celtic mythology, his hedonistic habits escalated into barbarism. While getting to know more about Celtic mythology, Ramos aka the prophet seemingly came across the Druids, a group of priests who enjoyed prophetic powers in ancient Europe, especially in Celtic cultures. Druids were the ones who did human sacrifices to appease the gods, and they believed in reincarnation. Upon learning about the Druids, Ramos must have thought that he is one as well. The notion of becoming a supreme authority or being in the ability to interact with and satisfy the gods might have captivated him enough for him to think that he is a prophet or a chosen one like the Druids of the past. This idea is what motivated him to offer human sacrifices. He began to perform rituals and employ symbols related to the Druid universe. The Druid culture is represented by the circle mark on Sayoa's back, the straw dolls discovered in various locales, and the mistletoe. Ramos desired to appease Terranus, the storm and tempest god of Celtic folklore. On the occasions of the spring and autumn equinoxes, as well as the summer and winter solstices, Terranus needed to be placated. Ramos kidnapped and killed someone every three months for this purpose. If Lydia Vega, the woman in the hoodie, hadn't been able to escape, she would have been one of his first victims. It is evident from Ramos's relationship with Samuel that the serial killer had spent a considerable amount of time away from Infiesto. His prior victims may have originated from other regions of Spain because of this. Ramos might have been sent to the mining community only after the pandemic had begun, 
which would explain why Sioa was the first person from Ramos's homeland that he abducted. If that's the case, it's possible that the town people didn't recognize him as the prophet because he's hiding his identity while out in public, and years had gone since his disappearance. Manuel and the demon must have grown attracted to Ramos's ideas and principles after his return to Infiesto for them to stand up for them, even if it meant risking their own lives. Ramos began to think that the world is about to end after the COVID-19 pandemic. He must have assumed that Terranus's rage or displeasure with human behavior was the cause of the pandemic. Ramos may have believed that, as the alleged chosen one, it was his duty to placate Terranus. As a result, he abducted a young woman in front of the hospital where Sioa was being treated. By then, Samuel notices the young man who wore a straw doll in the school photograph of Manuel and the demon. He sets out to find him, only to encounter the prophet who is wearing a mask due to the pandemic. Meanwhile, Lydia lets Castro know that the last name of the prophet is Ramos, which makes her realize that the serial killer and kidnapper she has been searching for is none other than Agent Ramos. As far as the prophet is concerned, he needs to appease Terranus by sacrificing the young woman regardless of the obstacles in his way. He even succeeds in firing at Castro, but the bullet hits her hand. Before he could fire at her again, Castro takes advantage of an alarm that distracts the prophet and shoots him down. Before dying, he proclaims that this is just the beginning. The prophet must have been thinking that he will reincarnate since he had sacrificed several human beings for appeasing Terranus. Since druids believe in reincarnation, the prophet must have accepted his death with the belief that he will have a second life. Castro kills the prophet in order to exact revenge on Samuel's killer and to spare the young woman who is about to be slaughtered by the psychopath. By ending the serial killer's existence, she also puts an end to the killing spree that has been occurring across the nation.